Away! Away! <sighs> May peace be with you, brother. Uh, and you. We've seen you coming for a long while. Tell me, did you follow the path of a star to get here? Yes. I'd been waiting for years to see that star, and when it appeared, I followed it. I've been wandering for many, many months. Come with me, brother. Black skin shows you are of the tribe of Japhet. Why did you come here? I came all this way because I needed to find the truth. What makes you think that you will find your answers here among us? I want to know the secret of the beginning of all things. How did the world come about? Animals, stars, men. Why do you feel the need to know these things, my brother? To find peace. When I was young, I asked my father and my father's father. It was the gods they answered me, but how did they do it, I asked. If you really want to know, you'll just have to ask them, they said and smiled among themselves, because they were absolutely sure I never would. But you went ahead and then you asked them, didn't you? Yes, of course I did. As soon as I was grown, I went from temple to temple throughout my land, hoping to find the answers. But the gods had nothing to say to me. They were made of stone. I've come all this way to ask you the secret of the beginnings of life. I beg you, please answer me. But they were as silent as so many boulders. And then a very strange thing happened. One night, I had a remarkable dream. Or perhaps vision is the better word. In it, I was crossing the desert on my camel, and suddenly, a smiling lad with skin as dark as mine came running toward me, growing as he came. I realized it was some kind of miracle. Want to know the truth? You must search for the book. Only there you will find it. What book are you talking about? I've never heard about a book with the truth in it. The book of beginnings. Isn't that what you're looking for? Yes, that's right. That's what I want. It's what I desire above all things. But how do I find this book? Take this parchment. It's a drawing of the mountain you must look for. Look at the heavens every night. When a star you've seen before appears in the east, follow it straight to the mountain. There you will find the book that will explain the beginning of the world, the stars, the animals, and all living things. When I awoke, I found that parchment next to my pallet, and on it, indeed, was drawn the mountain where we now are. Take ah. a look. There can be no question. We were visited by an angel. An angel? What are you saying? What do you mean, brother? It was the Heavenly Father himself, the creator of the skies and the seas and the earth, the master of the universe who sent you one of his cohort of trusted spirits to show you the way to the Book of Beginnings. And are you able to show me this book I've been looking for? It is God's will that I show you the book, I will do so. But you think you're ready. What you read there may sate your great thirst for knowledge, or it may create further doubts. But you must believe everything unquestioningly, because what is written in that book is the word of God. Yes, I believe I'm ready. I will worship the word of God unquestioningly. Very well. Come along with me, brother.
But, brother, I don't know how to read. What shall I do? Don't worry, brother. There's nothing to worry about. I'll read it for you. Listen to the holy words, brother. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning one day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its own kind upon the earth. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and for years, and let them give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was an evening and a morning, a fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the firmament of the heavens. God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that lives with which the waters swarm, according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, a fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds.
and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the cattle according to their kinds, and everything that creeps upon the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man leaves his father and cleaves to his wife, and they become one flesh. And a man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. God created man in his image. In the image of God he created him. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over all things that crawl on the earth. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Read on, brother. I'm listening. And there was evening, and there was morning, a sixth day. And on the seventh day God finished the work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all his work which he had done in creation. Now the serpent was more subtle than any other wild creature the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say ye shall not eat of any tree in the garden? We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Oh. But the serpent said to the woman, 
You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The fruit is delicious, like no other fruit in the garden. Plus, it brings wisdom. You're a fool not to eat it. For when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was a delight for the eyes, and it was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and also gave some to her husband, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together to make aprons and loincloths. And they heard the sound of God walking in the garden, and hid themselves from his presence among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called the man, saying, Where are you? I'm over here, behind these bushes. I could hear you walking in the garden behind me, and I was afraid because I'm naked, so I hid myself. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten fruit from the tree that I commanded you not to touch? The woman that you gave me to live with and be next to, she is the one who picked the fruit from the tree, my lord. She gave it to me. Woman, what have you done? The serpent deceived me, and I ate one of the fruits from the tree, my lord. Cursed serpent, because you have done this, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. As for you, woman, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. And you, man, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree that I forbade you, cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all. And the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and clothed them. He drove them out and east of the Garden of Eden, and placed the cherubim and a flaming sword to guard the way to the Tree of Life. This was the origin of the universe. The beginnings of the earth and the seas and the skies and all the creatures who were created by God. Oh, these are the words of God, the words that I've been looking for all my life. 